What's your favorite American fast food restaurant chain? <laughs> oh my God, I don't eat fast food. <laughs> Have you ever had fast food from a fast food restaurant? In and out. In and out. Oh, I mean, I turn a blind eye to that. That's that's nice. Yeah, it was in Santa Barbara. Okay. And it was invited by Julia Child. <laughs> <laughs> Tosh Show. Tosh Show for show. Welcome to Tosh Show. Now, you may notice that I'm not wearing my wedding ring today. It's right here. About six months ago, I was surfing in Florida, a little beach break, shore break. Water was probably six inches deep. Jammed my finger. It swelled up. Didn't want to cut the ring off. So I let it stay on there. Uh, And then just yesterday, I finally was able to get it over this swollen, gross knuckle. Six months later. Oh, it was. But so now I have to walk around with my ring and, (laughs) and, and set it down near me. So that no one tries to have sex with me. (laughs) I got to do it. My wife's like, you better put it near you so that it blocks all the vagina (laughs) from engulfing your penis. Anyway, can you you tell? Does that look bad? It, It hurt. Oh, stupid. It still hurts. Whatever. I'll get through it. I've been sick too. Eddie, how you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. You were sick for a while there, huh? COVID over the break, yeah. Oh, man. That's a shame. Well, at least you're not on a ventilator. All right. (laughs) (laughs) I, I uh, I got sick, and I'm still talking about it. I had a cold three weeks ago. I'm not whining either. I'm creating content. How did I get a cold? Oh, I'll tell you how I got a cold. My mother in law, who's famously never sick, happened to be living with us for a month. And that entire month, she was open mouth coughing all over the Monopoly deal cards every night. You know the worst part uh, for me when I get sick? I got the flu. Uh, the worst part about it is n- not, not the pain of the sickness, but, but just being mocked by my wife because I have cold sweats and a fever of 100.1 degrees. That was my fever. Oh, I was on fire. I kept saying, I was like, call, call an ambulance. She goes, it's only a hundred. I go a hundred point (laughs) one. And then she's like, oh, I'm sure she's constantly does it. I'm sure it's so much worse than the flu we had three days ago. Oh, it's so annoying. It's, they call it a man cold because, because men, we whine so much. I'm a little needy when I'm not feeling well. I get it. And women just have a higher tolerance for pain. Sure. Unless we're talking about emotional pain, then they're fragile as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and please, here, here's what I'll find. Man colds are a thing. You know, we're all complete pussies and we deserve you to mock us. Fine. But women, how about this? You can't say everything is f- your oh I've I've got food poisoning. I think I've got food poisoning. Every time we order Chinese food, you've got food poisoning. That's racist, first of all. Second of all, you don't have food poisoning. You have good old fashioned diarrhea. We've all got it. We all get it. Just say it. There's some some girls just can't say they have diarrhea. What's going on in there? Um, I'm having diarrhea. <laughs> Eddie, you got any videos for me this week? Oh, yeah, I got a video. Be careful not to burn your tongues. I'm sure her father is very proud if by some miracle he's still around. <laughs> now, if you're just listening uh, to this podcast, uh, know that you can head on over to our YouTube channel and check out the links. Huh? That's what we do there. Let's get to today's guest. Uh, You will notice the uh, set's going to look a little different. It was, uh, we had a different table and we had, uh, we didn't have lights. The backdrop was a bit different. Okay, we we shot all these interviews out of order. And this was one of the very first interviews before we got our shit together. Today's guest is a world-renowned chef who happened to create the greatest chocolate chip cookie. I'm in. 
Enjoy. My guest today is a very accomplished French chef who started his career in Paris, then worked in numerous Michelin-starred restaurants around the world, now hangs his apron in Los Angeles, which is why I'm talking to him today. Bonjour, Remy. I'll be your host, Daniel. Can I start you off with some bread or our signature cocktail? Yeah, I'm good right now. What are you? Are you a one kisser, two kisser, or do you go three or, well, or it depends, four? Well, it depends where you're from. I man. understand. What are, are you? What are you? Three? So it's a three. But you know, I mean, in my family, the part of France I am, it can go all the way to four. But it's too much. It's too much. It's too much. Four, four kisses is so long. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you don't like it, your Whoa. family member. That's... You know, you're like, oh, come on, get away from me. <laughs> <laughs> you, can't, you can't keep kissing me, uncle. Do you want to hear my French accent? I don't know if this is offensive or not. Come out. This is my French accent. Go ahead. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I've got. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe in ghosts? You know, it's debatable. You know? No, no, it's not. Well, if I'm at my family house, uh -huh. I do believe in ghosts. <laughs> Anywhere else, yeah, it's not. <laughs> no, you don't believe in ghosts is but the answer. You, yeah. All right, good. Thank goodness. <laughs> Ratatouille. How many times have you seen that movie? Oh, my God. How many times? I think twice. Did you enjoy it or no? Yeah, I do, but, I mean, I'm named after a rat. Well, yes, but such a such a dignified rat. And rats, are, I think, overall are, are, are considered smart creatures. Right, but in a kitchen. I mean, that's the whole point. Yeah. All right, Remy, where are you originally from? From France, born and raised. I mean, I've been a little all over, so it was like either in the north of Paris or in the southwest. Do you go back to France every year? Uh, I used to. Are you allowed to go back? Of course I okay. am. Okay, all right. Just making sure. Well, I guess for a while I was not, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> what got you into cooking in the first place? You know, I started working in restaurants like in the summer, just doing things. And I felt like, you know, doing dishwashing and stuff like this while I was still in school. I was kind of a, I would say like a nerd, antisocial kind of person. Okay. And bringing me into that our environment where everybody was working together and I had to depend on each other, I was kind of like, oh, I kind of like that, you know, and see what they were doing too. And the creativity part of it was like, I really got hooked on that. How do you how do you handle that stress just constantly? At the beginning, it was a little traumatic. I'm like, oh my god, you know, I used to go home and not being able to sleep and wondering, am I doing the right thing? I mean, is this crazy? And then eventually, it's it's kind of like you melt into it and you focus on really what's important, and you leave a lot of the background noise and background stress not affect you. You wear you wear the chef hat in the kitchen. You know, I'm 6'3", so if I put a hat, I'm going to bang that thing all over and it's going to fall in everything. And I used to, like, make chefs upset with me because I used to cut it up. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would look like a, you know, a fast food guy or the ice cream guy. <laughs> and they would like, <laughs> laugh at me. I'm like, okay, so take it off. <laughs> a 6'3", six, six, I'm 6'4". Six, yeah. What's the shortest person, shortest man uh, that you can respect? What's that height? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, if they're below, below my elbow, I'd be like, okay, get away from me. <laughs> uh, you cooked in Germany. I was born in Germany. Now, they, I don't think of German food. Where were you born in Germany? Bopard? Off, Bopard. Uh, it's small. Uh, Frankfurt, near Frankfurt. Well, I walked near Frankfurt. But the food in Germany? So it was a French restaurant. Okay, thank goodness. So <laughs> it was a small, like one Michelin star restaurant. Uh huh. One thing that I really enjoy mm -hmm. in, in Germany was, you know, the how methodical and organized everything is. Oh yeah, I think they've taken that to another level. Oh yeah, got them into trouble a handful of times. Well, so me too. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a fun part, though. You know. The food was great. I mean, it was like my bases were covered, but what I learned was their organization, their uh -huh. way of thinking. They were like always re-questioning themselves about doing things more efficiently and better. How long have you been uh, in the United States? Uh, since uh, 84. You went to New York first? Yeah. How was your time in New York? Great. Oh, my God. I mean... 
In the 80s, New York, fancy restaurants. <laughs> How much cocaine did you do? None. How much cocaine did you see? A lot. Did you? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> I mean, yeah. When people ask me about the story about the rest of the world or even New York in, in the 80s, oh, it's not a joke. It was beyond belief. Even, even for me, I was like, whoa. Did you drink? Yeah, drinking I did. I mean, like a, most, a lot of chefs, they've we got a, ba- a bad reputation yeah, we, of a little we, too much. I never got to the point where it was a, a problem. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the drinking, you know, after shift, you know, binging until four or five in the morning or until the sun comes up and the restaurants or the bar you are, are like lifting again the iron curtain because they closed it at like three o'clock in uh-huh. the morning. And then you're like, oh crap, it's daylight. Yeah, <laughs> it's a... It's a uh, it's a sad feeling yeah. when you see that sun come oh up. Oh my God, yes it is. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of these people that that are, are that don't care about eating at all? I don't understand that. And and you know, I have a really hard way of describing. I mean, they have a sad life. Agreed. They go through life with body function. And it's really I eat, I drink, I shit. Mm-hmm. And they have absolutely no pleasure doing any of those. And it's it's kind of sad. Someone that says they don't have a sweet tooth, I just immediately get angered. <laughs> I like, like what, oh, you don't enjoy eating something that tastes delicious? Sweet. I mean, yeah. I mean, the thing, you know, sweet, fat, you know, all those salty. I mean, this is what triggers all your emotion, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, if they don't like anything, it's it's really strange, you know? When you were in New York, it was when you were a sous chef there, that's when you stumbled upon your chocolate chip cookie recipe, am I right? So the chocolate recipe is really Jacques Torres, and we I improved with him and mm-hmm. on stuff, yeah. Who was the one that deemed it the greatest chocolate chip cookie in the world? Who that, gave it that title? I think at the time it was the New York Times. I mean, that's a bold statement. I know. What are the things you like about the chocolate chip cookies? Because that's always a big exactly. debate. Well, what me, are the things you like about it and what are the things you don't want in your chocolate well, chip cookies? First of all, I mean, I'll, I'll start with it for me personally. And I care very much about chocolate chip cookies. And uh, I don't even know that it's my favorite cookie, but I still, I, I love it very much. And, and I've traveled everywhere. By the way, when I got married in Italy, okay, speaking of delicious food, mm-hmm. uh, Borgo Santo Pietro. Uh-huh. I'm not sure they're a sponsor of this podcast, but if Borgo <laughs> Santo Pietro would like to sponsor this show, I would I would love it. It was I had a beautiful wedding there. And they they also liked that I came there and I dressed in costume. Me and some of my friends, we dressed as old uh, tennis players from the 70s uh, with wigs <laughs> and everything like that. We just like with wooden I, rackets. I can see this. I, I got I I'll send you a photo. You'll love it. Anyway, my wife one time got forwarded an email that wasn't meant to come to us, that was them writing about our wedding. And they're like, the Americans want biscuits. And they were just- ref- Biscuits? Uh, co- you know, they oh, call yeah, cookies yeah, yeah, biscuits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it just oh. made me feel like I was, <laughs> like, oh. I was such a trashy little person because oh. I wanted a cookie. Anyway, for me, what makes a perfect chocolate chip cookie uh, the simple thing is, it can't. I can't have a crunchy cookie. Okay. I'm not a, if a if a cookie is crunchy. I'm there's no way it's the best cookie in the world. Okay. I don't want a crunch. You make crunchy chocolate. So chip? let me ask you mm-hmm. this: You want the the core of the cookie to be soft? Yes, but I'll be honest with you. I want everything soft. Rarely is a cookie out of the oven better than before it went into the oven. <laughs> 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 That's my that's my two cents. <laughs> Listen, but that's the thing. Anybody says it's the greatest in the world. It's like, well, there's there's different. There's, I know everyone I, has different tastes. I agree, and I I'm agree. an idiot, so I, I, I mine never, shouldn't count. I never agree on the best of this, the best of that. You know, but hey, you have to play the game too. You know. And now, in general, do you feel do you feel that you have to uh, be extremely patriotic uh, to your homeland? Do you have to, like, say that French food is the best food? No, I'm not. Because it's not, right? Well, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of good stuff. There's great stuff, but it's not the best. But it's not, you know, French has elevated the notion of going out and restaurants and conviviality and all this to to a more, uh, how would you say, like, you know, bold thing, you know? So we advertise it better than other countries. Oh, when I'm in when I'm in Paris, my wife gets so mad because people speak to me in French and speak to her in English. <laughs> because I know how to blend. 
I know how to blend and be right. like, like, uh, I even had a, a person that I stand with. He goes, oh, every, every day I tried to dress and he goes, oh, today you look like a true Frenchman. I'd be like, oh, I'm very excited to hear that. <laughs> I love, I love France. They like to eat too late. I don't like that. Right. I like to be at a restaurant right when they open. Five o'clock, <laughs> which is not happening in France. <laughs> no, that's 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 insane. So I, th yeah, to have dinner at ten, eleven, that's not good for me. It's my stomach. I, yeah. I, I like I like food to sit for a little bit. Right. I, I spent time in France. The last time I was there, I had a, a, a French chef uh, give my wife uh, a class, uh -huh. and all I could I, the food was she made probably the worst meal she's ever made. <laughs> It was. Unacceptable. I got some video of that, I'm sure. The one thing that I took from him, he just constantly kept telling her to clean up while she was cooking. And I I, I respected that. I was like, yes. She's always, he's like, yeah, you clean while you cook. Is that what right. you want? And I just was like, good, listen to this. You clean as you go. Uh-huh. That's right. Let me tell you about a restaurant in France, in Paris, that I ate at, and I want you to tell me I'm wrong. Everyone's, I had to go there, Septine. It's a, I know hard, Septine. it's a hard restaurant to get into. Right. Not a lot of Americans sitting in there. True. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, I want to experience this. I'm very open-minded. I enjoy good food. Uh-huh. It was too much. It was too much too for much. me. Too, too much. much. I, I don't know what. Explain too much. Too much, too fancy, too, I don't know. Like, I don't need foam over some cold egg dish. I don't know what I was eating, everything. Else. And my server, who uh, he was very... Uh, he was curious at why I was there. And, and, and then, and then he could tell sometimes when, uh, one of the courses, he's like, ah, the, how was <laughs> yeah, that? He's like, he's like, that's a bit woodsy, huh? I'm like, I don't describe things as woodsy, but anyway, well, am I wrong to, you know, to you, not you love not, that restaurant? It, it's a big debate right now, like about those restaurants that, uh, you know, how do you define fine dining? Mm -hmm. How do you define a good time in a restaurant? Is it, you know, the decor? Is it the fancy food? Is it the overly transformed food, like you said? You know, there's a lot of restaurants like this. I think they go too far now. And they won't do anything that's not from the region. So, like, I wanted a dessert. I was like, oh, is there anything that has chocolate or anything? No, because chocolate's not from France. So I'm like, okay. Yeah, that's, that's a little extreme because, right. I mean— Are you going to deny, you know, a uh, fruit because it's, you know, it's coming from Spain or? Mm -hmm. Don't no. get them started on Spain. <laughs> <laughs> It was the most expensive meal I've ever had in my life where I was like, oh, I really did not enjoy that at all. How come there's no good Mexican food in France? Yeah, you're right. You know, I think it's changing a little. Is though. it? Yeah. Me do you like Mexican food? I do. Oh, it's so good. I do. Can you handle spice? To a certain level, okay. definitely more than an average French person, which have absolutely no tolerance, whatever, for spice. Uh -huh. So, yeah, I've, I've traveled, so I've learned how to, like, sweat it out, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Do you miss living in France? Yes and no. French respect their quality of life. You know, they, they'll fight for it. And that's their primary thing. Or quality of life. And when I go there, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. You know, I appreciate that. Uh, well, I'm sorry, I'm not going, you know, I'm down. I'm, I, want, I want to go home. That's it, you know. I mean, my boss in New York used to say, in America, you know, you're like an orange, you know. We squeeze you to death. Oh. And then we throw you out. We find someone else to do it. What a, what a nice boss. I know. I take, I take vacations constantly. Yeah. That's literally almost all I do. Yeah. I, I just vacation. And when I'm on vacation, I'm planning my next vacation. I work in locations just so I can vacation. You have the luxury to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, because in restaurants, if you request a day off, they're like, oh, who's going to cover your shift? Who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? And they put the guilt on you. Like, I have to say, like, the restaurant business is probably like about 150 years behind everybody. When people talk about restaurants, like, it's so impossible for that business to survive. I'm always like, good. Yeah. It shouldn't survive. Yeah, right. It should. I can't imagine wanting to cook the same thing every night for 30 years. That, that's insanity. You know, you go it, crazy. It, it, it's interesting you say that. I was in New York, and one of my customers, I had changed the menu, mm -hmm. you know, and he came and he complained that 
he came like a few times. He really liked that dish. And, you know, why I took it off the menu? I'm like, well, I just cooked it 30,000 times. Yeah. You came to, you know, you come one twice a month and you enjoy it. I cook it every night, you know, hundreds of times. Sure. I'm like, I'm down. I'm tired, you know. So I think that's that's the the situation in, in in the restaurant business in general in America, I don't think the system is viable anymore. It's always you have to do it the cheapest way, the most efficient way. You don't care. At the end, who suffers is the staff, you mm-hmm. know, the staff and them all. Honestly, I think there's way too many restaurants in this in, in general here. Well, in Los Angeles? Yeah, sure. anywhere. Well, see, the, well I, I live out, you know, pretty far out in, in Malibu, and there's just a small group of restaurants, and anytime one of them closes, I get excited because I'm like, good, there'll be yeah, a new restaurant. Exactly. I'm tired of eating there anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, you worked um, at Bacara. In I did. Santa Barbara. That's right. Back when Bacaro was nice. That's now, I know Bacaro is not a sponsor, and I don't care. Because ever, <laughs> ever since the Ritz-Carlton took over, you've fallen off. I don't want to be there anyway. I'd rather stay at, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, Sandra Cedar Ranch or something like that. Anyway, do you like Sandra Cedar Ranch? Oh, it's beautiful property. It's so beautiful. Oh, my God. It's a classic. And it, you, you, you get your room there, and everything's included. Your meal at the restaurant and everything like that. So that's when you start ordering like a crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get my money's worth. It's so expensive. <laughs> um, you worked at Bacara. How long did you work there? Uh, four years. Uh-huh. I mean, I- Did had, you come from New York to directly that's there? Right. That's right. You See, were, that's a good switch. The, 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 you, were I, like, you, you needed that. After New York, like the squeezing of the orange, then you come to, to uh, Bacara and you're just uh, like- Oh, yeah. Oh. You, you go from 8 million people to 80,000. You know, it's like you eat the wall like full blast. You know, I mean, I used to- you know, finish work and try to get a glass of wine somewhere in town, and it's like nine thirty, and uh-huh. everybody's like, "Oh, we're closed." Yeah. And I'm like, "What?" <laughs> it took me a while to adjust. You ever read a nasty review about yourself? Oh yeah. Oh, what's the worst thing you can remember? That was written by Guy Green, who was like a really famous uh, food writer for uh-huh. the New York Magazine. I mean, very well respected. And there was a time I was at Le Cirque, and we did a beef cheek ravioli. This is the story of Ratatouille. Go on. Okay, and you're going to like this. <laughs> and she wrote a review, so it was not for me personally, but for the restaurant okay. because I was I was a sous chef there. And uh, she said that out there, them they had to serve a beef cheek ravioli. It's basically the equivalent of dog food. And like two years later, Mario Battle opened uh, Babo, and one of his signature dish was a beef cheek ravioli. Okay. And she wrote about it, and she raved about okay, it. Okay, so discredit the review. I was like, oh, my God, I got crazy, you know. Years after that, she writes a review now for me as a chef, a Montrachet. Uh-huh. So it was generic, and I was doing an event in uh, East Hampton, and she calls me because she was going to write the review, and she wanted to do a fact check. So she's like, hey, I mean, how's everything, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't want to talk to you. Mm-hmm. She's like, wow, I don't want to talk to you. I'm still upset about something. And she's like, wow, you, when, you remember when? Dog food. Yeah. You remember when I was at Le Cirque and you wrote that review and you said that we served you dog food? And she's like, oh. I'm like, yeah, a beef cheek ravioli? And then like a year and a half later, you like rave about Mario doing the same thing at Babo. I'm like, come on. I love that I you mean, hold a grudge. I love that you hold a grudge. <laughs> I mean, it was a nice way. You know, I was not really mean, but I wanted to oh, make sure, my sure. point. You made I your point. I made my point. And what did she say? Uh, she apologized. Ah, oh, there you go. Yeah. Food allergies. What do you do when someone gives you a laundry list oh. of things that can't be in their food? <laughs> uh, I, I remember there was a lady that came to a restaurant where I worked, and uh, the server comes in the kitchen and goes, oh. <gasps> Chef, I need to talk to you. I'm like, okay, what's the deal? And he gives me like a little kind of like a large business card laminated. Uh-huh. He had the name of a doctor on top. I mean, uh-huh. he looks like very official, but who cares? And <laughs> I didn't call the doctor. No. And and there's like 17 ingredients listed. Don't go to a restaurant. He's like, what do you want me to tell? I'm like, oh, I'm going to the hotel. So I went in the dining room and said, listen, I'm, I'm really, I have to apologize, but... 
we're not going to be able to feed you tonight. You know, and we cannot even offer you a glass of wine because you say you're allergic to alcohol. So we'll be happy to give you a glass of water. Right. <laughs> and did stay it, with your friend. And did, she was a big party with seven people, okay. you know. And she started making a scene. You know, I go all the places. They try to accommodate me. I'm like, listen, they can do whatever they want over there. You should have gone there. And she looked at me. She's like, you're serious? I'm like, absolutely. And as I turn back, I hear our friend going, oh, it's about time someone is calling your bullshit. Ah. <laughs> ah. I was like. <laughs> Good. I dated this girl, just an amazing body. I mean, wow. I her last boyfriend was Hugh Hefner, okay? <laughs> yeah. She had a huge shellfish allergy. Oh. That's, that's I mean, good. very dangerous. Yeah. Ha- has the EpiPen with yeah. her at all times. Yeah. Where do I take her on our first date? Oh, a nice little seafood shack restaurant. No way. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I want to see where I'm at in the relationship. What does she order? A baked potato. <laughs> 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 that's, that's a true story. Oh, man. Why do you hang out with my friend John so I much? I know. I don't understand the relationship at all. <laughs> he's a good guy, you know. I mean, we're sure a lot he's of a fun. good guy, but, you know, but, but still, it doesn't make any sense. A French chef and then John, this guy but he from loves, Ohio. He loves food. Well, sure. We, uh, yes, he does. He does. And, you know, I mean. And that's all you care about? No. I mean, the guy actually cooks for me. Can you imagine? Do you, uh, do you enjoy eating uh, when someone cooks for you? Or is it, is it? No, this is the best part. Mm-hmm. Because I think most people are. They are frightened by cooking for me, you know? Sure. And, you know, for me, when they cook for me, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm grateful. They appreciate me. I appreciate them. I mean, and it's not the end result. It's it's the conviviality. It's being together and, you know, sharing a meal. All right. What's your favorite American fast food restaurant chain? <laughs> Oh my God! I don't eat fast food. Of course you don't. You know what the you know what the answer to that question is? None of it. It's all horrible. That's right. Have you, you ever had fast food from a fast food restaurant? Yes. What what which restaurant? In and Out. In and Out. Oh well, I mean, if you're now that you say that out loud, it's like, well, I mean, I turn a blind eye to that. That's that's nice. Yeah, it was in Santa Barbara. Okay, and it was invited by Julia Child. <laughs> <laughs> how, how messed up is that? That's amazing. That's an amazing story. And you are from New York, you oh, know. So course. when I moved to Santa Barbara, she's like, oh, Remy, <laughs> so nice to see you. <laughs> let's go to in and out No, she's like, I'll treat you. Let's go on a date. Let's go for lunch. Uh-huh. And I'm like driving her, Sh- and I'm like, where are we going? And I'm like, oh, keep going, keep going. <laughs> and then she just did you go? did you guys go inside? Yes. <laughs> oh, you sat in a booth? <laughs> So, they give you little hats. You could have worn one of their little hats there. Yeah, the best part is like, you know, they're kids in there. And then you have no clue of course. who Julia Child was. So only the older people, like the parents or whatever, they're like, oh, my God. It's Julia Child. Oh, so <laughs> and and uh, the, I remember all the, the, the lady, because I paid, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, like, yeah, such a yeah, gentleman. Yeah, yeah, I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, but the person at the cash register would be like, uh, your grandma forgot a cup of the soda. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, your grandma. <laughs> it was like, but you know, I mean, she was she was as tall as me, you know? Oh. She she was like 6'1 or 6'2. Oh, yeah, yeah. She was a giant woman. That's great. I remember like, her coming in the kitchen, like, in New York, you know, once, and she's like, oh, Amy, I love you. I could marry you. You are one of the few cooks who still cook with butter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's good. Uh, she was a character. You ever, you ever uh, eat at a buffet in Vegas? Yeah, I have. <laughs> with you know, Julia Child? You have to be able, no, you have to be able to experience all those big, like I said, those big American things. Mm-hmm. You know, I cannot say I've been to Vegas and I only eat in, in three-star Michelin star, uh-huh. which is nice, but I also have to experience, okay, what is the big deal with the buffet, you know? <laughs> and and, and you, how was your experience? Oh, my God. It's almost disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to see this. Among- you think that, you think that's disgusting? When I used to oh start start working in Vegas, when I was a young comedian, you I loved w- it. No, no, hold, uh, 
I didn't get to eat at the buffet. I had to eat in the buffet in the basement with all the, the employees. The employees. Oh, and so, <laughs> like it, it'd be like the women with the headdresses on coming through, and we're all just shoveling food onto our plates. And I was like, this is as sad as it can get. But I would do it because it was free. <laughs> exactly. Like, do you eat sandwiches? I do. I love a sandwich. A good sandwich is good. Oh, yeah. I love a sandwich. But it has to be like the right proportion, the right texture. Perfect bread. It, it, the bread is the key, you know, because if it's too hot, you cannot bite it. Yeah. What do you think of wraps? Wraps upset you? Yeah, wraps is dumb. <laughs> wraps, wraps is good for like <laughs> tasteless vegan people. Uh, <laughs> enough you know? said. You're a personal chef now? Yes, I am. Do you prefer that? I mean, it was it was never something I really wanted to do. You know, it was the fact that the pandemic hit and whatever I was mm-hmm. doing, like hit the hit the bottom, like everybody else. And uh, I was lucky that this person came and said, "Hey, you pay your dues for a while. Come with me, and I'll help you." All right, well, let's talk about this. I want to talk about the personal chef. I want to know what's accessible uh, uh, to people and what's not. How many meals are you cooking a week for them? Are you there every day, seven days a week? Are you there five days a week? Three days a week now. Three days a week. All right, so you're open for business. You could take on another That's account. Right. Like if I wanted three meals a week, uh, a nice dinner entree, the whole the whole nine, nice fish, I wanted you to do the shopping, everything, dessert and everything like that, what am I, what am I, and for, for four people? Let's say the cheapest would be 700. Okay, to, you know, it could be a lot higher. Oh, sure. All right. So about 700. I, I, I'm going to be on the cheaper end. I feel my tastes are probably on the cheaper end there. <laughs> and you do uh, present it and, and serve it or no? So it depends. You know, oh. some people want it plated mm-hmm. because they want a fancy dinner. Who they have, you know, really high profile guests like my boss. You okay. know, once he has high profile guests, so everything is plated. I, I have servers. I, I mean, we do the whole thing. When it's family, we do it family style. Okay. When it's just a family, we do. Is it your family client? Style. Is your client a celebrity? Not per se. Uh huh. Okay. I mean, he's a very successful business person. Business. What kind of business are they in? I would say biotech, software. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm no longer interested. No. <laughs> <laughs> Your specialty is fish. That's what I like to cook best. Do you get by, Do you do all the shopping? I do. Where's the best place to get fish in L.A.? I mean, it really depends what you're looking for. Shrimp cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't like a shrimp cocktail? I don't. <laughs> That's just, you know, order a shrimp cocktail. That's disgusting. <laughs> Everyone talks about, like, oh, this is the perfect chef's kitchen. Well, what, what do you actually want? What's what's a great know, kitchen you seen, for you? Have you seen John's kitchen? I, John's house is there. I get lost. <laughs> I've never. I can't imagine the footprint of his house is so confusing to me. But no, every room I walk into, he's like, I just renovated this. I'm like, oh, it looks great. And but then you go into that one room where the two little kids are in little cages next to each other. And that's kind of scary. Oh. <laughs> Having twins. That is. I had twin sisters. Did you? Oh. Older or younger? Older. I guess I mean, that might be a little oh, bit. No, better. no, it was not cool. No? Because I was like. A I was, toy? <laughs> I was a toy <laughs> for a while. <laughs> oh, that's good. Do they do they enjoy your cooking? Yeah, they do. That's good. No, everybody in my family enjoyed my cooking, that's for sure. Do, do they force you to cook when you guys get together? Uh, they don't force me, but mm. I feel like, I, you know, they're, they're not always culinary inclined. I mean, they appreciate good things. They don't have the skills sometimes, so I let them plan, and then I help. It's really funny how it's a, such a skill. Like, you think, oh, I, I you can read, so you should be able to cook, and the two don't go hand in hand. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't mean to simplify it. it to that no, level. No, I get but it. it's like, if you give me step-by-step instructions, I still will not make a meal yeah. that, that tastes anywhere the way it should. Yeah, and, and that's kind of like, what it is with my sisters. I mean, they appreciate great food. They want the good food. So, you know what I do is I go shopping with them. I, I, still, the I still won't do it. I yeah. just, I'd rather, there's no, the money is worth it. Grocery shopping alone is the oh, worst thing ever. It's the worst, even for me. You know what I want? I would pay a fortune for someone, a service. I want somebody to invent this. I want someone to bring me four pieces of fruit every day to my house. That's because 
all I do is throw fruit away yeah. because it's no longer good. Yeah. And I just want every day four pieces set on my doorstep. Somebody do that. They used to deliver milk. They used to put milk on people's doorstep. Why can't somebody put four pieces of fruit every day? Isn't it crazy, the milk at the door? Oh, that is pretty stupid. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> and I, apparently I all they were doing was banging the moms. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good, no wonder it was a good gig. <laughs> uh, what about relationships with people? Physical, sexual relationships. When you spend 10, 12 hours close to mm -hmm. people, yes. it gets pretty intense. Sure. You know? Do you ever, while having sex, do you ever yell corner? <laughs> <laughs> You're watching too much TV. <laughs> <laughs> Do you watch the bear? Oh my god! This is the uh, this is the question this, everyone asks. This now? is the question everybody wants. It's yeah. so intense. They, they all seem like they're on the verge of a breakdown. Oh my gosh! It was a little accurate in some uh, level. The or? level of screaming and the level of disconnection between every character. Yeah, I mean, the first season, I well, I have to say, I had PTSD. <laughs> I was like, holy shit! I couldn't go to sleep. Talk to me about cooking shows. Do you hate them? Do you like them? Do you find them I mean, entertaining? I, do you watch them? I mean, they, I do watch a few of them, but I, I haven't in a while. I like the Great British Baking Show. I know that you prefer. <laughs> I know you prefer the French version. I do. I'm not going to watch that though. It's it's interesting to watch in parallel. I don't know why, but there is some time. The British version, I'm very impressed, and sometimes I'm like, come on, you, you you shouldn't even put this on TV. Well, I just, I mean, it's a sweet show. Right. Just rarely is there a show where everyone's positive and nice to each other. That's it's, true. It's, and it's not about insulting. And then for goodness sakes, the Paul oh, Hollywood, he does a handshake, and that's the biggest deal in the world to right. people. right. What about Guy Fieri? You ever met that guy? I did. Is it true that his hair is made from cheese Whiz? <laughs> it probably is. <laughs> <laughs> Why is Michelin, the tire company, in charge of telling us what the fanciest food in the world is? Yeah, well, they've done it for like over 100 years. Why? Why is the two things? Because he never started for the general public. He, was, he started for their reps when they were going in the, at the beginning of the 20th century when they were going from town to town, try to sell tires. The guys would start making notes like, oh, next time you're in that region, stop there for lunch. Well, who gives a shit what this <laughs> dumb tire salesman thinks is good food? I mean, yeah, before you're like a tire company, but, but now- But I mean, it still know. means something. Everyone still talks, oh, it's a Michelin star. Because they're the oldest, most established one. What about Zagat? Remember Zagat? Oh, Zagat. Oh, is it Zagat? I think woke culture canceled that. No, I mean, it's my accent. No, Zagat. It's bad. But yeah, I mean, Zagat was pretty good because you had a rating for the service, you had a rating for the ambiance, you know, the decor mm -hmm. and all this, and you had a rating for the food. So by reading like the few little lines, you had the general consensus of what you were getting into, you know? Right. Versus uh, Yelp, where Yelp is just people complaining that they didn't get enough fucking eggs. Oh, my chair was wobbling right. a little. It's not a useful review. Yeah, I look at Yelp and I'm like, if if the reviews don't say like, oh, they refuse to serve Asian people, yeah. then I'd be like, oh, oh, that's, I'm glad they wrote that. Right. I won't go there. But if it, if you're going to complain that the, the meal was $5 overpriced, I'm like, I don't care. Yeah. I don't want to read three paragraphs. Yet I do. I still read it. And that's one thing I never, actually, I never, ever read Yelp because it's just a waste of time. I disagree with you on one thing because then I can at least look at photos. If I can look at photos of the restaurant inside, I can, okay. get, a, I can get a feel. If I look how they printed their menu, if their menu looks disgusting, I can, you know, a bad font. A bad font, I'm out. But now you have so many ways of getting this. I mean, you have so many, you have... Better pictures. Right, whatever. I, it's easy. That, that's how I use it for some things. I'm, right. I'm, I'm just saying I still use it for some things. Tell me some overrated restaurants here in L.A. Oh, I don't do that. Okay, no. fine. I'm going to tell you some restaurants. I don't do that because. Fine. I'm going to tell you some restaurants that I eat at. And you tell me if, what you're, if, if it's overrated. Mm, Giorgio fine. Baldi. Okay. Oh, you had to eat this one first. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me, it's it's. A little overrated. Okay. Uh, the, the sweet corn ravioli uh, is very delicious. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. How dare you, Remy? All right. You, have you ate it? Fia. 
in Santa Monica, FIA. Yes. Oh, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful. Song. That's be- beautiful. That's date night. Yeah. My my wife makes me take her on date night. We our rule is once a month. I have to take my wife on a date. That's a good rule. It's a dumb rule. Why? I just like I'd rather not go out. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I know, I know. If she didn't say you have to take me out once a month, I would never take her out, ever. I would be zero times, and I would fall more in love with her. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, John and Vinny's? John and Vinny's, the restaurant itself? Mm-hmm. I think overrated. Remember when you said you weren't going to say if things were overrated, and then I say the restaurants, and you immediately say that they're overrated? Because I let <laughs> you say the restaurants. I don't want to oh, put you the name on oh, That's fine, fair. Felix in Venice. Felix is good. It's good. One Hard t- to get in, but... Thank you. Let me tell you something about it. So I take my wife there occasionally to Felix. Sometimes I'll have uh, my assistant make my reservation, and they'll make two reservations. Right. So what time do you get in when you have your reservation? Oh, I don't know, five, six, something <laughs> like silly. Of course. Uh, but if it's sometimes I say you have to put it under my name, not that it gives you anything, but at least it's, it's my name... They'll give me a better table, but, right? But sometimes it gets put under her name, and I, or and I lost my mind because then I had a garbage table in the back. That's my biggest complaint with restaurants. I understand it's the margin for profit is impossible. Huh. I understand that. I don't want to sit two inches away from somebody else. Now it's date night. I'm this far away from somebody. Yeah. Guess what, Remy? I'm not going to talk to my wife tonight because yeah. I don't want these people listening to me talk. So Understood. I just sit there. Understood. So charge me three times as much and fucking move the table two feet away. And that's always my point. You know, if, you, if your business model is not sustainable to be, so what do you, how do you define fine dining, intimacy, the ambiance, but if you're so close to each other and you're charging high price, well, maybe there's something. Do you need the volume or you need this, yeah. you know? And that's, yeah, there's a small margin everywhere. Yeah, what do you think of Nobu? Nobu is, Nobu is a chain. Ah, look at that. <laughs> Nobu is a chain. That's a chain. Your final meal before you die. Oh. What are you having? I haven't decided yet. I'm not ready to die yet. No, good. I'm thinking I'm going to have a big burrito just because I want to make a mess. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I never heard that. (laughs) What about chili? Do you you ever make chili? Yeah, I do. I love chili. Yeah. I'm just just feeling you out for things I like. (laughs) You ever make a brookie? I have. You've made a brookie? I have made a brookie. That's the stupidest thing. I know. (laughs) I still don't get it. (laughs) What are you talking about? You don't get it. It's a brownie and a cookie. It's a brookie. Yeah. Do you uh, you ever make a a queen of men? Queen of men? Yeah. Are they difficult? They're tricky. I mean, I wouldn't say difficult, but yeah, just a lot of sugar and butter. I know. I, I (laughs) I eat one once a week. Okay. At the farmer's market. I go to the farmer's market, and there's a pastry person there, and I get, I get a right. queen of mon, and I'm like, uh, You're good for the weekend. <laughs> no, just for, for that day. You get sugar. I have, I have a, see, I come from a, a, a line of uh, sweet tooths. Okay. Uh, my my grandfather was a baker. All right. I uh, had a bakery, had, had a couple bakeries, and, and, and my dad bakes, and I've always enjoyed baking, and I've always just, I can, I, every meal I have, I can eat a dessert. No matter how amazing a restaurant is, if their dessert menu doesn't appeal to me, rarely am I interested in going. Really? I, I, so need, you, I need to know dessert. that the dessert is, is going to be delicious as well. Wow. Well, you know, I mean, it makes sense. You know, this is how you hand the meal. Yeah. In a restaurant, especially, I feel for me, the last thing, either the little petit four or the mignardis mm-hmm. or the dessert, that you're right, is that's what's going to set it up. Because if you put all that effort to do the beginning and then you end up on a whoop note, it just kills it. Every Asian restaurant, horrible desserts. I know. What's up with that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's too funny. All right. Tell me about your famous uh, cannelé. What about the cannelé? First of all, what the fuck is a cannelé? What the fuck is a cannelé? <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's nothing. It's kind of like a kuyanan of Bordeaux. You know, it's very sweet. Mm-hmm. It's a texture thing, so the outside is really crunchy. The inside is kind of gooey. Mm-hmm. You, you might not like it since no, you I don't can, like crunchy I, stuff. I can you know? hand. No, I just don't like a crunchy <laughs> cookie. 
But the center is kind of like soft and gooey, and uh, the external is, you know, very crunchy. And how did you perfect it? By trial and errors. You're very protective. You won't let anybody know your, what, how you actually make them, correct? Well, I, I will tell them how to make them, but it, it, it takes a little more than that to do that because it, it's really a game of patience. And really, I mean, I did some today. Okay. So yeah. you, you're going to try it. Oh, wow. Do I have anything? To, I use my hand. Oh, look at this presentation. There you go. Oh, okay. Sweet. Is that the best cookie in there? All right, it looks good to me. That's fine. No. How dare you? It's, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful cookie. My wife, she's always like, whenever she makes chocolate, I make chocolate chip cookies for her, she doesn't want a lot of chocolate in it. And I'm like, what? There's a lot of chocolate. I know. That's, I'm excited about it. I think in the recipe, there's more chocolate than flour. <laughs> oh, really? Nah, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Oh, that's good stuff. Yeah, that's good stuff. You know what grosses me out the most about food shows is watching people eat. Yeah. It's disgusting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what you're doing? Yeah, of course. What an amazing cookie. <laughs> this is the best cookie I've ever had in my life. That, that, that's a crazy thing to ask. I don't know. Yeah. But I would I'd pay $5 for this All for right. one cookie. That's fair. At a farmer's market. That's fair. That's a good price. Do you ever sell your cookies? No. Oh. I know. That's stupid of me. <laughs> All right. Now this. How are you supposed to eat this? Are you just supposed to bite it? Yeah. Anything fancy? What do I need to know about this? This is very crunchy outside. And it's going to be like pudding in the inside yeah. or no? Mm -hmm. Is it going to spill? No. No. Do I need to cleanse my palate before with some water? If you like to. I don't yeah. know. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, you don't want your tongue to be coated in chocolate before you do that. Yeah, I don't even know what I'm about to taste at all. What if I don't like it? You don't have to finish it. Mm. Oh, you do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, the smile. <laughs> I like it. I love it. Here's the thing. I could eat nothing but dessert <laughs> until I die. Yeah, yeah. And just, like, see, I know my life wouldn't be long. But you'd oh, be nice. Oh, it'd be nice. Yeah, that's really good. That's really neat. Well, you've got it. Listen, I'm thank you very much. This is exciting. Chef Remy, this is this is the way to my heart. A chocolate chip cookie. Uh, I appreciate everything. Thanks. Right. Thanks, Daniel. Okay. That was four. Family. Pasha. That was a great interview. I want to thank Remy. He's an amazing chef. Had him over at my house recently. He kicked your water bowl over. That made you very mad. He doesn't drop a lot of food either. That also upset you, Carl. My dog Carl's with me as always. Remy also uh, uh, burnt a batch of chocolate chip cookies at my house. Now, he, he blamed it on, uh, oh, he's like, oh, your convection bake runs really hot. Man, I, don't, I don't think it runs true. But anyway, he, he did it in the second batch. It was amazing. He also did some other fancier desserts, which uh, the foreigners at the party loved. The Americans are like, oh, could you put a little more sugar in this? <laughs> but uh, no, it was wonderful. Uh, Boyswearpink.com. Check that out. The GOAT, the new reality uh, competition show that I'm hosting, comes out on Amazon sometime. Hey, Amazon, why don't you tell me when the show is going to be on that we shot over a year ago? The process for this show is maddening. <laughs> Uh, I'll be performing here in Los Angeles at the Dolby, May 4th, for the Netflix Comedy Festival. That's going to be exciting. And before we go, we got a, another bedtime story from my son when he was three years old. Hope you like this one. See you next week. One upon a time, there were two animals. They were Seattle and a sea lion. But... They didn't know how to swim, so they got on a skateboard. Then they waddled to sea, and then they twisted because they were both not happy. Because they were mean animals in the ocean. They were in Florida ocean. Then they saw alligators. 
But then there was a Malibu and swimming in the ocean in Malibu. And it was just poultry. But they saw a sea rock and it ate them. The end. But. You can't say the end and then but. <laughs> that story was crazy. I liked it that though. That story was interesting. I liked it. That was a good story. Thank you for that one. Okay. Show. Talk show for show.